Hey everybody, this is Rubble with Cloud9. Uh, I'm bringing you guys today another cool sci fi product review. Today I have Mr. Spock's Science Tricorder from Diamond Select Toys. I'm kidding. Here's Mr. Spock's Science Tricorder from Diamond Select Toys. This thing is incredible. I got a phone call from my comic book store dealer, and uh, he told me that these things were in. Very, very excited. I had some people in town at the time, they were able to pick one up for me. And uh, I'm really, really glad they did. Uh, this thing is incredible. This is by far their best product ever. Um, this is, of course, the tricorder from the original series, the one that Mr. Spock always carries. That's why it's called the science tricorder, I suppose. Um, but this is this is Diamond Select have outdone themselves once more. This is a fantastic product. There are no screws anywhere on this thing. It's come, it's pretty flawless. Um, but like all Diamond Select toys, they're a little fragile, so be careful with them, alright? So this opens up here. There we have a view screen. A couple buttons there. The grill here is supposed to be a copper color. For those of you that are into mass amounts of detail, um, I might actually paint it because it's it stands out nicely. Uh, the screen here is supposed to be from the episode Arena with the Gorn. Um, so I'll show you guys the sounds. This is the sound button right here. Getting another life reading, Captain. Azimuth 93 degrees, range 1570 yards. The speaker on here is really loud and really nice. Really, really nice. Very metal of some kind. An alloy resistant to probe. There seems to be some disturbance coming from that cave. Most strange. Readings indicate a life form in the vicinity, apparently human. Impossible to calculate. We lack data to analyze. Captain, impulse is that direction. Very weak, possibly a survivor. Getting another life reading, Captain. Azimuth 93 degrees, range 1570 yards. An alien metal of some kind, an alloy resistant to probe. Anyway, those are the sounds. Um, here's the screen once more. It's really nicely detailed. Um, it's got landing party down here, and what does it say in there? Life forms over here. Um, oh, well, it's, it's got a, quite a bit of cool stuff. It looks really cool. Um, second button here, the, uh, I don't know, yellow-orange button. You pull this flap down. You have the moray here, and you have the, um, these are like CDs, they're memory cards, and, uh, you can take them out of here, and, no, you can't take them out of here, but supposedly they could in the show, and that's how they would scan information and such, so... So there it is, just like that. It scans it supposedly how it was supposed to. They never actually made a functioning tricorder. So this flap comes down too as, as well. And here fits the science scanner. The only problem is the science scanner sits in, it rattles around a bunch, and uh this uh, this flap isn't really built that st as sturdy as this one is strong, so uh, it'll fall out on mine at least. Uh, it's got these tabs on here; they barely stick into there like that. Um, and this is really cool of them. So, like this is the battery compartment right here. You pull this open, and there's your batteries. It's got a on-off switch. Play, try me, right there. So you flip that closed. And one way I've seen them displayed before is uh, try and get it like that. Have it at an angle like that. I've seen them displayed a couple times like that. Don't know why they display them like that, but they do for some reason. So, yeah, this is the voices scanner. And this one is cool. Scanner is my favorite of all the sounds. Um, you press it once and lights go around, close it, 
Leave it here and wait. And oh. Fascinating. This is my second favorite of all the sound effects. This is a great sound effect. I'm glad they put this in. Press it again. Close it once more. Wait. Wait. So yeah, that's a cool, that's a really cool feature, I think. Really, really fun little gimmick there. <laughs> um, I'm going to close it. It has an adjustable shoulder strap here. You can adjust it. And uh, instructions are kind of bleak on it. There's a tab. You can barely see it. I don't think you can even see it in here. There's a tab right here, though. You grab this tab with your fingernail and pull up. And you pull up, and this all comes out. And... Uh, you can readjust the strap on these angles here. It's down here to begin with, and I moved it up because it's too short for me. And when you're putting it back together, put it back this way. Here's the top, right? Put the first peg in here. Put it on the bottom and press on the bottom. Uh, let's see if I can even get it. There we go. Press on the bottom because there's more strength in here than there is on the top. The top is very skinny. Right in here, that's all the plastic there is. And you're pressing on that plastic onto the viewer here, and uh, you really, really risk uh, breaking it. And, you know, you don't want to break it right away. Um, I'm going to show you guys the scanner really quickly. There's not much to it. The medical scanner is uh, much, much more interesting. So you just turn it on, and it changes to four different colors, and eventually gets faster. Um, I can only remember that they used this in one episode, and if anybody remembers the episode, please tell me. I don't even think Spock used it. It was somebody else. There, see, it just goes faster, and then it goes slower again. So that's all it does. doesn't do much. Um, the strap, when you get it in the box, is all is wound up into a small little ball, really, really tight. So everything's bent like this. Uh, the easiest way to get rid of that is to uh, find like a nail or a hook like a coat hanger on your wall and just hang it up on the coat hanger overnight or for a couple hours and the weight of the tricorder will uh, oh, someone's closing the door will uh, stretch this out won't do it completely but it does it enough so you might want to replace it with a nicer leather because it's uh, plastic um, I don't know what else there is to say the only two cons I actually have about this product is um, the uh, it's it's light. This is a piece of plastic here, and a piece of plastic in the inside here. So you can squeeze this together. There's air on the inside of here. Um, that really bugs me because it makes it makes it lighter and feels more fragile. It is it's more fragile than the communicator and the phaser. At least it feels that way. And I wish that they had built. Yeah, it closes because it's really bright on the camera. Wish that they would have built a hook on the inside of here. Some kind of hook that you could clip the science scanner into here. Instead of putting it in here and having it rattle around. I might just get some of that nice black foam and put some of that in there uh, as an insulator. Because I don't want to lose the scanner. And it's it's cool to have, but it bounces around all the time and I, I hate that. Um, those are my only two cons about this thing, really, and they've really outdone themselves for the price that it is. Uh, I paid uh, almost sixty bucks for it. I don't know. I don't know if that's the actual price for it, but I know they're around. I know they're around forty-five to fifty, fifty-five dollars. I've seen. Um, go out and get one of these right now. It's well worth the money um, for collectors. I'm going to give this a nine point five. I think it's just a fantastic product. Any collector should have one of these. Much better than the Playmates. Go and go and sell your Playmates one. You could get 80 bucks for a Playmates tricorder and go buy like three of these because <laughs> it's way better than the Playmates one. For kids, I'm noticing that there's a lot more kids that are getting interested in the collectibles of Diamond Select. So for any serious collectibles that are kids, I'm going to give this a 9 because it's really great.
Someone's leaving now. So I'm going to be off. This is Rebels of Cloud 9, signing out.